Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about dual usage rooms. I'm seeing a lot of situations where people are mixing and doing live recording in the same room. Well, this is good and bad as, as everything in life is, right? There's good and bad to everything. So the problem with rec uh, recording and mixing in the same room is that the acoustical treatment requirements are really different. So trying to find a balance between the requirements for mixing and the requirements for recording is difficult, especially in a smaller room. Now let's take a look at this room here that we received from a client. And you can see the, the rig is set up on one end of the room and the piano is set up on the other. And then you can see the treatment types that are in there. So the first thing we have to look at in any room, regardless of usage, is the low frequency treatment. And the first thing you could notice in, the, in this picture is that there's no low frequency treatment in this room. Now, how can you tell? Well, it's real easy. Just look at the depth of the treatment. And you see most of the treatment in this room is two, three, four inches deep. Well, that's not going to get you down into the lower frequencies. At four inches in, in any box filled with building insulation, you'll be lucky to get to 100 cycles, maybe 90. Okay, well, that's not going to do anything in terms of low frequency. And you can see in the pictures that we have a piano. We have a full range monitor system in this room. So low frequencies are going to be produced in this room. They have to be managed because you can tell by the room size that it's not, you know, large enough to really do both. So, and it's even really not large enough to mix in. So you have to be really careful here. So when we look at these dual usage room situations, we always recommend a variable acoustic program. Now, if we take this room that we're looked at the pictures of, we could have units on casters for our, let's say our ACDA series, which are on casters, that could be moved in around the mixing position. That would give you broadband absorption from 30 to 6300, which is exactly the range most people mix in. There's obviously frequencies above 6300, but that's the meat and the potatoes of a mix. It's that 30 to 6300, and that's why we designed our products to work in that range. They're not, their frequency responses are not accidental. They were specifically designed to work in that. So our carbon technology in the ACDA series goes from that 30 to 300 cycles, which is the low frequency range we want to get. And then the foam on the face behind the fabric goes up to the 6300. So in these rooms, if we were treating this room correctly, we would surround the mixing position, the front and the side walls with the ACDA units to manage the energy. And then we'd have a series of units that we would move around the piano or whatever instrument you were recording in the room. You could even do vocals. You could move the units around the vocal microphone and create a little room that was free of reflections. So with the ability to move things around in the room, you can take a small room and you can use it for many usages. Well, not many, but a few usages. So the goal here is to satisfy the treatment requirements for each usage and do it in a way that you can move them around. Now, if budget's an issue, you could use one set of ACDA units on casters for both usages. You could put them around the piano when you were recording. You could put them around the mixing position when you're mixing. So it just depends on your budget and what you're trying to do. A lot of people say, well, I'd rather have the mix position firmly treated and not moving it around so I'd have consistency and predictability, and I get that, that's important. So you could treat the mixing area with the units and then have some portable ones that you put around the piano. So we see a lot of dual usage. We see a lot of people trying to mix and record in the same space. Just remember that the treatment requirements for both are different. There is a lot of overlap, but we really need to focus on the low frequency energy first. Now we can see in these photos that there's plenty of reverberation management. There's plenty of two inch panels hanging on the ceiling. There's plenty of wall hanging units. We've got some glass doors there. 
not that big of an issue. There's shades on one wall and kind of a French door on the other wall, but the glass surface area is minimal compared to the rest of the room. So, and it's more on the live room side, it's behind the listing position. So it's not gonna be that great of an issue to be concerned about. If it was, we could cover those two. And our foam sliding uh, window system would work great there. So put it open when you wanna look out, close it when you're doing your recording session. So these dual usage rooms can be treated we just have to be careful of what we're doing in the room and make sure we have the right kind of treatments for both usages. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.